Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our 3D platformer tutorial series. Now that we have our player being able to be damaged by little objects in the world, so like our little cactus friend here, we want to make sure that our player doesn't just take damage from the same objects repeatedly over and over again. Well, not that it doesn't take damage from the same objects, but that we're able to have like a small fraction of time where we can be invincible, because it's not very fair if we run into one of these cactuses and bounce into the other one and we take double damage. That doesn't feel good for the player. So we're going to make it so that we can make our little guy be invincible. Now, making making him be invincible isn't isn't too hard of a problem. Uh, what we're going to do is open up our health manager script. So we have this over here. And we're basically going to say, okay, our player should be invincible for a certain amount of time. So we'll go up here. We're going to create a couple of extra variables. We'll have a public float that we'll call in invincibility length and then we'll have a private float that we'll call invincibility counter so our invincibility length will be how long we decide we want our player to stay invincible for and then invincibility counter will be what we actually use to count down how much how, how long the player actually stays invincible for so what we'll do is whenever the player gets hurt down here we'll say okay if the player is hurt then set our invincibility counter to be equal to our invincibility length so say we decided that we want our player to be invincible for one second we set our invincibility length to be one second and now we're setting our counter to be um one second based on the invincibility length and then we say well now that we've set this counter we need to make that count down in time so in our update loop we'll go in there and we'll say if our invincibility counter is greater than zero then in that situation we want to make our invincibility counter count down so we say invincibility counter minus equals time dot delta time and all, all that does there is say okay take the invincibility counter and set it to be equal to itself minus time dot delta time so very simple very straightforward so we let that count down back to zero and when it gets back to zero we no longer have our invincibility counter doing anything but of course all we've done here is set up a counter counting down through time it's actually stopping us taking damage and to stop us taking damage all we have to do is say here basically we don't want any of this to happen if our invincibility counter is still counting down so if our invincibility counter is above zero we don't want this to happen so what we can say here is if invincibility counter is less than or equal to zero so basically if our counter is zero or if it's gone below zero which can happen as we take away time dot delta time from it so basically in that situation we don't want to put our close bracket above all that text we have here we want to put it just after like that so now we have if our invincibility counter is below zero then we can take some damage and we'll knock the player back and we'll set our counter back up to full length otherwise don't take any damage at all so let's go and test this out so we'll save that go back into unity let it compile for a second and we'll go to our game manager here uh, I'm going to assign the player into our player controller thing. I know we're doing it through our script anyway, but it's okay to set it up here as well. I'm going to set our invincibility length uh, really high. I'm going to set it to 10 seconds. Um, and if we press play here. So now we'll see. I'll hit that and I'll bounce back. But because we have 10 seconds to play around with now, we don't take any more damage for a while. Wait for our 10 seconds to go by. There we go. We took a little bit more damage again. So we can see our invincibility counter if we go up to our three little lines here and click on debug you can see here our private variable we can see it we can't make any changes to it but we can see our counter ticking down and we can see if we go back in here and run into an object there we go we can see our counter gets going again it's ticking down perfectly over here okay so that's perfect that's exactly what we wanted to do but it's not enough just to do this invincibility we want to be able to give some feedback to the player because if you just have this invincibility happening, it's not actually very interesting. Um, it, it's good for the player, 
that they that they're invincible and they don't take any extra hits and I just realized we don't want to leave this at 10 seconds we'll we'll shorten that down to about one second um but we want to be able to show the player that this is happening and basically all we're going to do to do that is make our player model flash on and off and there's a very simple way to do that essentially what we can do is if we go into our player here go down a couple of these things if we go to the plane here our plane on our model is what's set up to show our, our character in the world so if I just switch back to normal view here if I turn off skinned mesh renderer here like that it just makes the model disappear from the world and if we turn it back on he pops back in so we're going to take advantage of that so we're going to go into our script here first thing we're going to do is create a reference to uh, that renderer so we're going to create a public renderer that we will call player whoop no I can't spell player player renderer like that so we'll just save this go back in here and we'll assign that now so we'll go to our game manager and we now have an empty slot for our player render so click and drag the plane from the player into there so basically what we're going to do is as soon as we get hit we'll turn off the player renderer and we'll make it cycle through a very short space of time of turning back on and back off repeatedly over and over again and the way a very simple way we can do that is much like we've done with our invincibility counter we're going to create another counter here we'll create a private float that we'll call flash counter and we'll create a public float that we'll call flash length and we're going to set our flash length by default to be 0.1f so that'll just be a default value that it'll throw into unity we can always change that uh, within unity ourselves so we've got our flash length and we got our flash counter so the very first thing we want to do is when we take damage down here we'll put it in at the bottom here we'll say okay take our player renderer that we just set up and say player renderer dot enabled equals false so that's no longer enabled on on our player and we'll also set our flash counter to be equal to our flash length so we'll save that now of course all that'll do at the moment is as soon as we get hit it'll turn off the player renderer and it'll set our counter upwards so we need a little bit more uh, things going on than that that's not exactly what everything that we wanted to have do so what we'll do inside of our invincibility counter loop because we know we only want our player to be flashing on and off as long as we're invincible so we can say okay just do this whenever our invincibility counter is above zero so here we'll say if um, our flash counter actually no we won't type that in first first thing we'll do is make our counter count down so we'll say our flash counter minus equals time dot delta time so we'll be making our flash counter count downwards and then what we'll do here is say if our flash counter is less than or equal to zero so our counter has gone down to zero or below then in that situation we want to either turn the render back on if it's turned off or if it's turned on we want to turn it off again and we just wanted to keep repeating that over and over so rather than having to say player renderer dot enabled equals true and then work out something else and see if it's false all we have to do is say our player renderer dot enabled should be set to the opposite of whatever the player renderer dot enabled already is so we can just say up here player renderer dot enabled equals not player renderer dot enabled so if our player render enabled is true then the not version of that will be player render dot enabled is not true or player render is false and if it's false we'll say it's not false which will be true so we're basically setting this to be the opposite of what it is already and then we just need to reset our counter flash counter equals flash length now there will be one potential problem that could arise from this so let's say for example we have our invincibility counter is counting down from one second 
and we have our player render gets turned off then turn back on and turn off and on and off and on but what happens if our invincibility counter counts down and it goes below zero so we're in the last loop around here so it won't get called again because of this what happens if we get to here and our player render gets turned off as well so now our invinci invincibility ends and our player render gets turned off basically what we're going to end up happening is that our player model will be disappeared from the world and we won't be able to see where the player is which is obviously not very useful for what we're doing so what we'll do instead is right at the end of this little loop just add an extra thing to say if our invincibility counter is less than or equal to zero because it's we've taken away time dot delta time up here well if that's the case and that means that this loop won't be running again well if that's the case then we need to make sure that our player renderer dot enabled is equal to true so no matter what the last time we go through this if statement the player model will definitely be activated in the world and won't we won't end up with the player turning invisible so we can save that and we'll go back into the game here let it compile you can see our flash length is now not 0.1 just like we set it up to be by default but we can change that if we want to we can set it to any other value it won't change back to 0.1 um, when we play the game or anything like that but we can go to play now and now if I run and hit that there we go we see our little dude flashing and when, when he stops flying you know he, or sorry when he stops flashing you know you can take some more damage but we won't take damage as long as we're invincible I'm trying to time it out let's uh, actually I'll make his invincible a bit longer just to demonstrate we can run into these things and we can keep running in as long as we're flashing we won't get hit away but once we stop flashing we'll take it damage again so you can always mess around with that and see how long do you want your player to be invincible for and how long should they be active within the world so there you go we've got our invincibility all set up next thing we need to do is so you can see if we just look over here our current health is minus four so currently at the moment when we take damage we can just keep taking damage forever so we need to set up a situation where when our player gets killed or anything like that we want our player to reset back to a certain spawn point within the world so next time around we're going to take a look at doing just that